We are going to begin this worship service by singing Because He Lives, and I will lead you through this, and why don't we stand? I just had you sit, but let's stand again and let's sing Because He Lives. To the glory of God, let's sing. God sent His Son, they called Him Jesus, He pray that you will now give attention to the reading of God's word from Paul's letter to the church of Corinth, chapter 15, starting in verse number 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit corruption. But behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, 
For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass a saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, be immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. This is the reading of God's word, and I pray that he'll bless the reading of his word. Let us pray. Father, we come before you. And Lord, we worship you in spirit and in truth at this very moment. And Lord, we want to worship you by celebrating and giving praise for the life of Robert Fiedler. Lord, we thank you for his dedication, his love, Lord, his uh, charity, and Lord, how he shared his life with those around him, especially his immediate family. And Lord, we give you praise for this gift of grace that you have put into our lives. And Lord, we celebrate his home going. Lord, we are not here guessing where he's at today. Lord, we know where he's at. He's with you. He is in heaven. And Lord, we give you praise for that. And Lord, Lord, even though we recognize that, we, our hearts are sorrowful. And Lord, we grieve and we mourn um, for the passing of our brother. And Lord, I pray as we grieve, not as all men grieve, but with hope, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you will bless his family with peace. I pray you'll give them comfort. Lord, I pray that you'll begin the healing process in their life as they move through the next couple of days and weeks and years to come. And Lord, I pray that as they think of their dad, their granddad, Lord, I, I pray, Lord, that you will make heaven sweeter, sweeter for all of us. And Lord, we thank you for the hope and the reality and the assurity that one day we will see Robert Fiedler again. And Lord, for that we give you praise. Be praised, O God. And we pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh 
This is a surprise to my family. Only a couple of them knew I was going to speak today. Um, my name is Stephen Buckley, and I'm Robert's son-in-law from New Jersey, where Robert and Florence spent most of their life. This past Thursday evening, my wife flew down to Greenville just to see her very ill father. It was just a few weeks ago that ill health and old age started to become a real big problem, even more than his Alzheimer's condition. Uh, to my surprise, but to my joy, my eldest son, Andrew, also decided to come down at that particular point in time, and he came down from Louisville, Kentucky, and joined Gene Thursday evening, and I thank him. That was great. Unfortunately, that Saturday evening, I received a call from Jean, and she told me the very sad news that her dad had died. He passed that evening with many family and friends around him, and I can't think of a better way to go. I want to speak about family for a moment. I grew up as an only child. And um, joining the Fiedler family was a wonderful thing. For the first time in my life, I had cousins through marriage. I had no cousins. I had brothers-in-law because I had no brothers. It was a great thing. Uh, distance has kept us apart over the years, but to have a family that at least was on the other side of a phone was a wonderful thing. And especially, I want to thank John and Ann. Uh, the reason I want to point them out, when I married Jean, Robert and Florence still lived in New Jersey. And I married into the family with the expectation that we would be taking care of them in their old age, whatever came. That was what I signed up for when I got married. But boy, were we all surprised when they just announced out of the blue, we're moving to South Carolina. And all of a sudden, Ann and John, to their surprise and to their marriage surprise, they became one of the great pieces of our family puzzle as they took on the responsibility of not only Ann's parents, but of Robert and Florence. Robert was the best father-in-law I could have ever have hoped to have. And with the passing of his wife Florence a few years ago, a large chapter of my life has come to an end. I know I was very fortunate that God has led me to marry into such a great Christian family and to have such a great wife as Jean, Robert's daughter. Thank you, Stephen. Appreciate that. Let me further rem the remembrances of Robert Fiedler by reading something that the family put together. Robert John Fiedler was born in his parents' home in East Orange, New Jersey on May 15, 1924. Hospital delivery in those days were rare. Robert died on February 18, 2012 and entered his eternal home with the Lord and with his dear loved ones. When we reflect upon the life of our father and grandfather, Robert John Fiedler, we recall that he lived with a deep sense of gratitude to God. One of the hymns he sang many times over in many years was, Count your blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Robert indeed counted his blessings and lived with a spirit of gratitude for what the Lord had done in his life. As a young boy and as a teen, he lived through the Great Economic Depression. His father died when he was a teenager and money was tight for the family. When he graduated from high school, he was a gifted athlete, a class officer, an above average student, but he had no extra money. So he went to work in New York City as a clerk for Standard Oil of New Jersey and enrolled in business courses at night at NYU, New York University. After Pearl Harbor and the beginning of World War II, Robert enlisted in the U.S. Army and served in combat for three years in the European theater. He survived the Battle of the Bulge. A lot of us probably don't know that, but he survived the Battle of the Bulge in December of 1944 and advanced with General George Patton's U.S. 3rd Armored Division through Northern Europe in heavy combat. After the war, he returned home and married Florence, who was his wife of 54 years. Robert resumed work with Standard Oil and became, uh, that became eventually Exxon and finished a bachelor's degree in accounting at night school and an MBA in business management. 
Robert and Florence and her uh, kids moved to the home in a quiet suburb town on the New Jersey shore. For his entire working career, he left home at 6 a.m., commuted an hour and a half to get to work as a manager at the Byway Refinery, and then returned home by 6.30 p.m. After supper, now this is amazing, all right? After supper, he had the energy to play with his kids, to read his Bible stories for them at nighttime, for nighttime devotions and nighttime prayers before the kids went to sleep. That's great, isn't it? That's wonderful. After a 39-year career with Exxon, Robert took uh, an entire, uh, early retirement at the age of 70, uh, 57 years old. He felt fortunate that the company offered him a golden parachute and enjoyed the years of retirement. As he looked back on his life, he repeated many times how the Lord had blessed him with his family, his wife, his children, his grandchildren, his church, <clears throat> his care, and his retirement. Robert was very healthy for many years, always athletic. Uh, when he was uh, still when he was 81 years old, he was still winning uh, senior Olympic gold medals for discus um, and shot put. That is just amazing, and the softball throw. He was modest in explaining his many gold medals. He said, I looked around at my competition, and they were all a bunch of old men. <laughs> oh, that's great. As we reflect upon the life of our loved one, Robert John Feather, we recall <clears throat> how he lived out his faith in Jesus Christ. Another hymn that he sang over the years was living for Jesus, a life that is true, striving to please him in all that I do. He made his profession of faith as a teenager. He served as a Baptist deacon for many years. He was a Sunday school teacher for middle school boys for 20 years when others found them too difficult to handle, to teach. Every week he taught Sunday school, attended Sunday worship, and then back for Sunday evening worship and Wednesday night prayer meetings as well. He and his wife Florence were volunteer youth advisors for senior high youth. He was elected by his congregation to serve on four different pastor nominating committees. I, I knew I liked him for some reason, over a 40-year uh, span. And uh, this added to his testimony of uh, confidence in him and his faithfulness and wise judgment. When he took early retirement, Robert devoted himself to volunteer service in the church in a variety of Christian uh, ministries. He volunteered with Teen Challenge, a drug rehabilitation program for young adults, which is faith-based. He served as a trustee uh, to the Ocean Grove Camp Meeting Association, a Christian community on the uh, Jersey Shore, which invited nationally known preachers and Christian leaders to address a congregation of 6,000 on summer Sundays. For over 71 years, he was a member of the renowned Ocean Grove Ushers Association. As an accountant, he volunteered to repair tax um, filings for dozens of elderly church members year after year. What a blessing. He served as an evangelistic visitor for years at First Baptist Church Red Bank and also for Edwards Road Baptist Church. One final trait, we remember with gratitude that our loved one Robert was deeply committed to his family. We knew that he prayed for us all, kids and grandkids, uh, by name. He had an extensive prayer list uh, which included immediate family, extended family, and church family and many others who were included in his prayer concerns. We were taught Christian stewardship by the example of our parents. They showed us to give a tithe, a 10% of our income, to the work of the Lord and then um, enjoy giving beyond that for causes that bring blessings to others. Our father, grandfather, great-grandfather Robert supported church colleges and seminaries, Christian hospitals and Christian radio stations, missionaries by the dozen, and any youth who was seeking money for a mission trip. He had deep loyalty to and for his family. He showed special care for elderly relatives when they had health concerns. This included care for his mother, mother-in-law, and several elderly aunts and uncles. And as his children grew into adulthood, he offered to help with our own income tax forms. He helped with our major home projects like painting, landscaping, and as a proud grandparent, he attended a host of sporting events, dance recitals, and church programs. It is with deep gratitude and love that we gather to give thanks for all that was good and kind and loving in the life of Robert John Fiedler. Truly his life has been a blessing to many. And all God's people said to that, amen. 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 I dreamed I went to heaven.
walked upon the streets of gold beside the crystal sea. We heard the angels singing and someone called your name. We turned and saw a young man and he was smiling as he came. And he said, friend, you may not know me now. And then he said, but wait, you used to teach my Sunday school when I was only eight. And every week you would say a prayer before the class would start. Day when you said that prayer, I asked Jesus in my heart. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am a life that was changed. So glad you gave. Then another man stood before you and said, Remember the time a missionary came to your church and his pictures made you cry. You didn't have much money, but you gave it anyway. Jesus took the gift you gave. That's why I'm here today. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am a life that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so the eye could see this life had somehow touched by your generosity little things that you had done sacrifices made unnoticed on the earth in heaven now proclaimed and I know up in heaven you're not supposed to cry I am almost sure there were tears in your eyes as Jesus took your hand and you stood before the Lord. He said, my child, look around you, for great is your changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so glad you So glad you gave. Amen. Thank you, Carol and Pat. I just want to say to the congregation this morning, thank you for coming. And I know that the family uh, just wanted uh, probably me to articulate their thanks uh, to you and their love for your support. And um, it, it, we just appreciate you so much being here to celebrate the life of Robert Fiedler and to worship the Lord as God. Whenever I think of Robert Fiedler, I think of Edward Road Baptist Church 
left-hand side, very back row. I mean, that's when I think of Robert Fiedler and I think of Florence Fiedler, that's, that's, that's where my mind goes because every Sunday morning, that's where Robert and Florence would be. And they would sometimes show up in the congregation early and I would go back and I would talk to them and Robert and Florence were so kind and so encouraging to me, but I think they really wanted me to stop the conversation, move on, so they could listen to the pre-service music. I think that's really what they wanted, and, and they enjoyed being there in that back pew. And by the way, Gene, I don't know if you know this, but we refer to that as the Fiedler bench, all right? A couple of months ago, so I was, uh, I was trying to describe that part of the church, and I said, you know, the Fiedler bench, where, where the Fiedlers sit. And they would always be there, and it wasn't a sign of traditionalism, it was a sign of faithfulness. They were always there, even when Robert uh, didn't feel like it. Many times he was at church worshiping the Lord his God. He was always kind. He was always loving. He was always encouraging to me as a pastor. And when I think of Robert Fiedler, I think of a good man. I think of a solid man. I think of a man who was dedicated. I think of a man who wrote his life sermon um, throughout all of his life to the glory of God. And all of us have a life sermon. All of us are preaching our funeral sermon at this very moment. And in generalities, our life is basically predicated upon four things. Our, our dedication, our devotion, our death, and our destination. That is the accumulation of our life sermon. And as far as Robert's dedication is concerned, I don't think we need to talk anymore. I mean, the eulogy, the life sermon that I read just a moment ago is absolutely profound. He was dedicated to his work. He was dedicated to his country. He served his countries in one of the most uh, pensive and, and tough struggles in the Battle of the Bulge. And John and, and Gene and Bob, I didn't know that till uh, yesterday. I did not know that. And what a dedication to his country. But most of all, he was dedicated to his family. He was dedicated to his wife, Florence. And I remember visiting in the home after Florence had passed on and gone to be with the Lord. I remember how Robert was trying to just kind of get a hold and wrap his mind around the fact that his beloved Florence had gone on to be with, with Jesus. And, but he loved her. He loved her greatly. And I, and I, I can remember when she was in the wheelchair at, at the church, sometimes they would hold hands back on the Fiedler bench back in that area. And he loved her. And she was... Uh, a dedication in his life. He loved his children, and uh, that is uh, manifestly obvious uh, to all of us that he loved his children, and um, it is carrying through in their lives today. And one day, hopefully, we can tell the testimony about of uh, Gene and Ann just a couple of days ago. I wish I could tell it. I didn't get your permission, so I'm going to move on, all right? But one day, we're going to tell that testimony, and what it is, it's the, the faith and the life of Robert being lived out through his children. But um, he was also dedicated to his church. He was dedicated to his church. He was dedicated to his children. He was dedicated to his wife because he was dedicated to the kingdom of God. Robert Fiedler strove to live out uh, Matthew 6.33 where Jesus says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all of these things, your family, your work, every, all of these things will be added unto you. And so he was dedicated to many things. He was dedicated to the right things. He was dedicated not to things of temporality, but he was dedicated to things of eternality. And all of his dedication was built upon, it was predicated upon, it was founded upon his ultimate devotion. You see, in our lives, our life is built on not only what we're dedicated to, but our life is dedicated to our ultimate devotion. And so many times we get those two things mixed up, what we're dedicated to and our ultimate devotion. But, but we should not because Robert's devotion determined what he was dedicated to. Our devotion is our object of worship. It's what we orbit around. It's what we predicate our lives upon. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 19 through 21, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Where your ultimate devotion is, there will be your heart. There will be your dedication. Why was Robert Fiedler so dedicated to the things of eternality? Because his ultimate devotion was to his Lord, Jesus Christ. 
Robert Fiedler was not perfect. None of us are perfect. But Jesus Christ made the difference in his life. Why was he such a good man? Why was he such an extraordinary man? Because Jesus Christ made the difference in his life. Jesus Christ was a theme. It was the plot. It was the ending of his life sermon. You see, for whenever Robert was a teenager, he realized that he needed Jesus Christ in his life. He realized what the Apostle Paul said in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Mr. Fiedler realized that he was a sinner. He, he realized that he needed a Savior. He realized that he needed the forgiveness of sin. He realized what Paul said later on in Romans 5.8, But God demonstrates his love toward us. He shows us his love. He demonstrates his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Robert Fiedler knew he needed Jesus Christ. He knew he needed Jesus Christ because only Christ can forgive us of our sins and Christ can put us in a right relationship with God. Therefore, Robert Fiedler repented of his sins and he made Jesus Christ his Lord. And throughout the rest of his life, his devotion was Jesus Christ. And we can see this in the, his life story, his life sermon. We can see this proliferating through the rest of his life. His devotion to Christ put right his priorities. His devotion to Christ put right what he should be dedicated to. Not only was his devotion, not only did it have a profound effect on what he was dedicated to, but it also had an effect in his dying and in his death. Let me just tell you, say this this morning. And I think we all know this deep down inside. But I think sometimes we try to run from it, we try to hide from it, we try to cover it with pretense, but we cannot in the end. The greatest fear of man, the greatest fear of man is death in the grave. That's the greatest fear of mankind. But praise God through the victory of Jesus Christ, in Robert's life, death and the grave were conquered. That is why the Apostle Paul says in 54, 1 Corinthians 15, so when this corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O grave, where is your victory? Robert Fiedler knew that the only thing that could defeat death and the grave was the victory that Jesus Christ won on the cross. It was the victory that Jesus Christ won through his resurrection. And Robert Friedler realized that if he put his faith in Jesus Christ and if he asked forgiveness of sin, then the victory that Jesus won would become his victory. And whenever Robert Friedler was a teenager, the victory of Jesus Christ became his victory. It became his hope. Whenever Robert was grieved and whenever he mourned the passing of Florence, there was that underlying river, uh, Gene and Bob uh, and and John, that underlying river of hope and of peace, why? Is because he knew that the victory of Jesus Christ was Florence's victory. He knew that the victory of Jesus Christ gave him hope in that moment. Because of his devotion to Jesus Christ, he did not grieve as most people grieve, but he grieved with hope that he would see Florence again. And isn't it a wonderful thought to think that right now, as we're sitting right here and standing right here, that he is with Florence. Isn't that wonderful that the hope and the victory of Jesus Christ is realized in their life right now? And Stephen said something about Alzheimer's. Someone asked me, they said, you know, when someone gets Alzheimer's or dementia and they may forget their, you know, who Jesus is or, hey, listen, folks, it doesn't matter what we forget in life. What matters is what God remembers. And he knows Robert Fiedler, and even in the midst of Alzheimer's, Gene, Bob, and John, he knew your dad's name. And that's what matters in life. Amen? Amen. And so our life sermon is made up of what we are dedicated to. It's made up of what our ultimate devotion is. What is your ultimate devotion today? I pray that your ultimate devotion is that same devotion that Robert had in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's made up of how we face death. You know, none of us want to face death. I don't want to face death, but I know this. I have hope that when I pass from this life, I will see Robert Fiedler again because he is with Christ. And where Christ is, I will be also. And is also made up of our destination, where we are going. I love John 14, verses 1 and following. The Bible says, Let not your heart be troubled. 
You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. And then Thomas said very, very authentically, very, very genuinely, he said, Lord, we don't know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said, you want to know the way to the mansions? You want to know the way to heaven? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Because of Robert's confession of Christ and his devotion to the saving grace of his Lord Jesus Christ, Robert is where Jesus is. One of my boys several months ago, or oh, several years ago, asked me, just like most children do, Daddy, where is heaven? Now you try answer, you try telling a four-year-old where heaven's at. And the only answer I could come up with, I said, Ian, heaven is where Jesus is. And Jesus is where heaven is. Whenever Robert Feeler gave his life to Jesus Christ, and whenever he passed, when he took his last breath on this earth, he went where Jesus is. He went to heaven. And when if we are in Jesus Christ, and our sins are forgiven, and our faith is in Christ, whenever we take our last breath on this earth, we will be where Jesus is, and we will see Robert, and we will see Florence again. A couple days ago, the Lord put an amen to Robert's life sermon. He drew him to himself, to his heavenly home. But we are still developing our sermon. And I want to challenge you this morning. What are you dedicated to? Are your priorities right? Do they reflect a devotion to Jesus Christ? Not perfect. We're not, none of us perfect. But do they reflect a devotion to Jesus Christ? and to the kingdom of God. What about death this morning? How are you facing death? Are you fearing death? You don't have to. Jesus has won the victory, and that victory can be yours just as it was Robert's. And you will know that heaven is your home. You will have that hope, and that hope will encourage you, it will strengthen you, it will give you joy and peace in this life everlasting. And so this morning, I end with this. Let us praise God for the life of Robert Fiedler. Amen? Amen. What a great man. But let's remember that what made him great was his dedication and his faith in his Lord Jesus Christ. And so, John, I love you. And I love you. I love your family. And you mean so much to our church. And I pray God's peace upon you. Bob, I don't know you as well. But my brother, I love you. And I pray that the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ will cover you and will give you comfort and rest. And Jean, thank you so much for your, your commitment and your confession to Christ. And Stephen, thank you for your words. And we pray that the Lord will give you peace. The Lord will give you comfort. We praise God for your daddy. And we praise God that we know where he's at at this very moment. Let us join our hearts together in prayer. Father, this morning we come before you and we worship you by reinstating our devotion to you, by confessing you as King of kings and Lord of lords, a sovereign God. And we thank you, our Father, for sending your only begotten Son to this earth so we can know hope, not a hope so, but Lord, that we can know hope and peace and joy everlasting. That peace that transcends beyond all human thinking and all human comprehension. Father, we thank you for that in Jesus Christ. We thank you that our sins can be forgiven. We thank you that we can be whole in your sight. We can be holy and righteous because you are our righteousness and our holiness. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the life of Robert Fiedler. We thank you for his life. Lord, the things that he was dedicated to and what an example he is to all of us. And, Lord, we know that his dedication was predicated upon his devotion. Lord, his love for you, his love for your word, Lord, his love for your church. And we thank you, God, that he sought the kingdom of God. He sought your righteousness, and all these things were added unto Robert Fiedler. And, Lord, we praise you for his life. 
We praise you for his homegoing, Lord, knowing that even through tears and through sorrow, Lord, that we will see him again, not as he was, Lord, not in the state of feebleness, but, Lord, that we will see him as he is, Lord, as we will see you as you are. And, Lord, because we know whenever we move from this life to our heavenly home, that, Lord, we put on the incorruptible and we put on the immortal. And, Lord, we will be with you forever. So, Lord, I pray that we'll go from this place praying. I pray that we'll go from this place praising and worshiping you and thanking you for Robert Fiedler and the fact, Lord, that we will see him again. Thank you, Jesus. And it's in your name we pray these things. Amen.